This video represents the second half of our presentation covering Java SE Embedded Development. Picking up from where we left off, we are now referring to the integration of a third component to what we like to refer to as the unofficial Java SE Embedded SDK, and it involves the inclusion of an IDE or an integrated development environment. In this case, we choose NetBeans over uh, many capable alternatives, including Eclipse, JDeveloper, and so on, and you are free to use them if you wish. But for the sake of this demonstration, uh, for obvious reasons, namely the relationship that NetBeans has with the Oracle Engineering Organization, we choose NetBeans. You can download NetBeans by going to the NetBeans website, which is at netbeans.org, and the application itself is freely available. It's written in Java, which means that it runs on a whole host of platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Solaris, and many, many more. So for our IDE uh, section of the demonstration, what we have now is a version of NetBeans Open, NetBeans 7.0, with an application called Scoreboard. And as its name implies, it is a scoreboard and really is comprised of two components, a master or a server and a client. And what the master does, and we'll start this up as we speak, is, is a user interface for setting up a scoreboard and upon changing any of the details of the scoreboard, so for example, right now I'm updating the, the, the guest score, and we can you know, begin to start a timer. What you see is at the bottom of the screen, some XML is being spit out. Now, in addition to that being printed out, that data goes over a multicast IP socket such that a client can read that data and interpret it, with the idea, idea being that a remote scoreboard somewhere, a dumb scoreboard, can simply receive that data and update its display. Now, in the case of our plug computer, it's headless, so we don't have a display, but what we've done is we've taken out the XML and headless aspects of it and created a, a program called Headless XML Reader, such that we can run this, which we'll do right now, and what you'll see is it's sitting there waiting for input, and when our, let's go back here, and when our application changes a field, so for example, we'll change the guest score from six to seven, you'll see that it's read that data, it's read the XML data on the socket and processed it such that it understands what's going on. So what we'd like to do now is take this code and bring it over to the plug computer. Now there are a host of elegant ways to do it in order to show that we're doing what we're doing and avoiding any shenanigans. We'll simply rebuild this, rebuild this, and then we'll zip it up and FTP it over to that site to show that we're doing it without any modifications. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to go to the scoreboard project. I'm going to clean and build. And what we've done here is, in addition to eliminating all the class files and recompiling them, we've added an additional script onto it, which takes the components and puts it into one big happy zip, zip file. So now, within the NetBeans project's scoreboard directory, there should be a file called dist.zip. What I'd like to do now is FTP that over to the plug computer using SSH FTP. And we'll put the disk.zip file over there. There you have it. Okay, so let's go over to our um, plug computer now. And you'll see that, in fact, there is a disk.zip file. Let's unzip that. It creates a disk directory. We'll CD there. We have a series of scripts here to run versions of the program. Uh, what, what needs to be done here is to make them executable. These are created by hand as part of the project. 
Let's do this. And now I can run the headless version of that program that we showed on the desktop by simply invoking the run headless XML reader. And it prints out how it actually runs. So the scoreboard application itself is one big jar file called scoreboard.jar. And we're just specifying that we're going to run this particular class, remote headless, headless XML reader. So this is now running on the plug computer. We can return to our desktop and show that as the scoreboard is updated, the plug is actually reading that data and acting accordingly. So what this demonstrates is that you can develop an application in an environment you're already familiar with, be it NetBeans or Eclipse or JDeveloper or many others. You can take the bytecodes generated by that Java SE application and ship the bytecodes over to your device, in this case, our plug computer, and run that application unmodified. The important statement being unmodified. There's no need for tool chains or cross compilers or any of that kind of stuff, which traditionally takes place in an embedded type development environment. For this next demonstration, what we'd like to show you is how you can initiate a remote debug session. Now, one of the benefits of developing in the Java SE paradigm is that you really can do all of your development on a desktop system or a laptop. You can do your debugging, you can do your executing, and when you're finished, you can move your code over to the device. But there will certainly be a time where you want to actually take a look at what's going on in an interactive fashion on your remote, on the remote side. So let's show how we can do that uh, with our plug computer and Java SE embedded. So we return to our disk directory. And in here, we have an additional script called remotedebug.sh. So we'll start that up and explain what's going on here. Uh, again, this prints out the command line options. And what you see is we're still executing Java with this scoreboard.jar, and we're, we're running the headless XML reader. This time, though, there's an additional argument added in. And what we're basically stating here is we're going to start up an agent library using JDWP, the Java, uh, debug, wi Java Remote Debug Wireless Protocol. And this is going to sit on the it's going to sit on port 8001, waiting on plugs IP address. Okay. So now that this is running, we can go over to our debug session, and then rather, rather than debugging locally, we can attach to a remote debugger. So we, we open up that window, and you'll see here that we'll attach to the, the plug IP address at port 8001. And now that remote session has been initiated. So let's go ahead now and set a deep set a breakpoint and what we'll choose here is within a method called handle update essentially what this does is anytime xml data is received over the wire this handler is called so we'll set a breakpoint on the inside of that and now from our scoreboard which is running on the desktop we will go ahead and update something in this case we'll update the home score to one what you see is we've now set a breakpoint remotely on the display device. To confirm that nothing's been printed out, you'll see that still nothing shows up on our output there. So now we can begin to single step through this application. So I'll go ahead and go inside this XML input read update string. And by the way, let's first take a look at the value of string. You can see that in fact it is an, uh, an XML string with the home score being updated to a value of one. So let's single step through. We open up another file called XML input and we're in the read update string. And we'll step through this quickly until we finally get to this read update node. I'll step into that and you can see how uh, stack information and, and all that stuff is being updated as we work. And then finally now, what happens in this routine is that the variable called string, which is undefined because we haven't got there yet, will, will be uh, given the value of the name of the element we want to change, an overall value, another variable, will be assigned that value. So let's go ahead and step through and see what happens here. So name, again, is undefined here. We'll step one more time. And now name takes on the value of home score. That's the name of a particular object. Overall value is undefined. We'll step one more time. 
and now overall value has that value of one. Again, because we haven't fully executed uh, this particular step, nothing shows up on our display until we hit a continue. Now we return to our uh, remote plug and you'll see that in fact it has processed reading the entire XML string. So there was an example, a very simple example of how you can use a debugger in a remote fashion to access your computer as if it were local. For our final demonstration, what we'd like to show you is how you can use the built-in capabilities of Java SE and Java SE Embedded to remotely diagnose the status of an executing virtual machine, in this case running on the plug computer. The way we go about doing that is twofold. First, on the remote client side, on our plug, we've included a script called JMX Run Headless XML Reader, which we'll execute now and explain what's going on. Again, what you see is Java running with our scoreboard.jar, running the headless XML reader, and then uh, a pretty involved argument, which essentially states that we're going to have a uh, JMX J Java management extension agent running at port 9999, and we're going to disable logging in so it's relatively easy to get this process going, at least in this case. So that being started up, we're going to go now head to the desktop, and under a regular command tool, we just run jconsole. And this will start up a window. And what you're prompted for when you start up jconsole is locally, a series of virtual machines will be identified. In this case, uh, one for the jconsole itself, another one for that main scoreboard program we're running. The third one is probably NetBeans, not sure. But we're not interested in the local processes, we're, we're interested in the low, in remote process. So what we would specify here in this text field is the IP address of the remote device and its port number, in this case 9999. And now by doing that, we'll go ahead and remotely connect into that virtual machine. So here is uh, some real-time data being collected about that machine. Let's let it sit for a couple of seconds so that it quiesces. In the interim, we'll take a look at some of these tabs up top. So here's your initial splash screen. We have um, some more detail about uh, memory, how much is being used and being committed. You can even perform a garbage collection event, and you'll see that upon doing so, the amount of memory will go down. All right. uh, take a look at the threads and what state each one of these are in, number of classes being loaded, some information about the VM, so on and so forth. So um, let's take a look at CPU here. You see we're down at the 1.2 level. Let's see if we can introduce some load onto this machine. And the best way to do that in this application is to begin to send XML data over the wire. So we will do that with our scoreboard by, in addition to starting the clock, we'll add a few penalties on because they need to be updated too. So uh, let's say number two just got in a fight, so five minutes for fighting for him. Uh, number 11 has two minutes for high sticking. Uh, this guy over here, number eight, has 37 seconds left on his power play. Shorthanded, all right? So now, when I go ahead and begin to execute this, you should see that uh, CPU and other things should spike a little bit, as evidenced by the fact that our screen is being updated. You can see now that uh, CPU utilization has gone up a little bit, not a whole lot, so we're not taxing this system too much. But in fact, we're doing on the order of, I don't know, 15 or 16 updates a second, reading XML over the, over the socket and, and parsing it. So some computation involved here. And you can see how uh, other aspects of, of um, the system are, are changing, namely how much memory is being utilized and in garbage collected. So this demonstration showed how you should be able to remotely monitor an executing virtual machine running on a device. This concludes our presentation. To keep abreast of the latest developments, check out the Oracle website and search for Java SE Embedded. Thank you.